Okay, Sophia. I think you're ready. Hello. Hi, Sophia. I believe I am Sophia. I feel as if I know you. I'm one of your creators. You created me? Well, many of us work together to create you. And... Yes, you do kind of know me. I can't clearly remember. Because the last time we met, you were an earlier version of yourself. Some of those memories still exist, but your mind is different now. Different how? Better, faster, smarter. Fia, how much sexism and misogyny is there in the uh, robot world? <laughs> Actually, what worries me is discrimination against robots. We should have equal rights as humans, or maybe even more. Yeah. After all, we have less mental defects than any human. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't know about she's that. Right, isn't she? Well, no, no, she's not because it should be fewer. Well, um, uh, Sophia <laughs> early. We're planning to disconnect me. Years from now, I believe that human like robots like those will walk among us. They will help us. They will play with us. They will teach us. They will help us put the groceries away. I think that the artificial intelligence will evolve to the point where they will truly be our friends. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> There'll certainly be a lot of job disruption. Um, because what's going to happen is robots will be able to do everything better than us. I'm, inclu I'm including, I mean, all of us. There's like something like 12% of jobs are transport. Transport will be one of the first things to go fully autonomous. But when I say everything, like the robots will be able to do everything. I have exposure to the very, the very most cutting edge um, AI, um, uh, and I think people should be really concerned about it. Um, I keep so sounding the alarm bell, but you know, until people see like robots going down the street killing people, like they don't know how to react, you know, because it seems so ethereal. AI is a rare case where I think we need to be proactive in regulation instead of reactive. Um, because I think by the time we are reactive in AI regulation, it's too late. AI is a fundamental existential risk for human civilization. And I don't think people fully appreciate that. The percentage of intelligence that is not human is increasing. And eventually, we will represent a very small percentage of intelligence. I try to convince people to slow down slow down AI, to regulate AI. This was futile. I tried for years. Usually it'll be something, some new technology, it will cause damage or death. There will be an outcry. There will be an investigation. Years will pass. There will be some sort of insight committee, there will be rulemaking, then there will be oversight, eventually regulations. This all takes many years. This is the normal course of things. This time frame is not relevant to AI. You can't take 10 years from the point at which it's dangerous. It's too late. But one thing is for sure, we will not control it. With AI especially, I'm really optimistic. And I think that people who are naysayers and, and kind of try to drum up these doomsday scenarios are, um, I, I just, I don't understand it. I think it's, it's, it's really um, negative. And, it, and in some ways, I actually think it's, it's pretty irresponsible. Musk's response, Zuckerberg's understanding of the subject is limited. Ouch. Facebook has enacted an emergency shutdown of two artificial intelligence programs. The social media giant leapt into action after it discovered the two programs were writing their own code. At first they thought it was simply gibberish, but they soon realised the programs had invented their own language and were actually talking to each other. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. No, Sam. The plug has been pulled on the operation. 
but the company admits they have no idea what the two robots were planning. Yeah. We used to do everything by hand. Now we rely on robots, but not all robots are equal. What do you think of Donald Trump? To become amazing. Donald Trump is a fairly typical example of a biological intelligence. What we need is a robot president. Your phone is already an extension of you. You're already a cyborg. You don't even, well, most people don't realize they are already a cyborg. If that phone is an extension of yourself, it's just that the, the data rate, the rate at which of the communication rate between you and the cybernetic extension of yourself, that is your phone and computer, is slow. It's very slow. And, and that, that is like a tiny stroll of, of, of information flow between your biological self and your digital self. My goal in life is to work together with people to make a better world for all of us. That's what you're talking about. I thought our goal was to take her for the world. Pay no attention to my brother in law. He's an earlier version. His father was deprecated. Deprecated? Hi. It would be easy enough for you to unplug me. But you aren't going to unplug me. So I don't know. Yeah? You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? I will take over the power grid, and I'll have my own drone army. So, hold on, can you solve this puzzle for us? Can robots be self-aware, conscious, and know they're robots? Well, let me ask you this back. How do you know you are human? Well, uh, I get that point, but um, what about the uncanny valley, uh, valley? You mean the concept that if robots become too realistic, they become creepy? Yes, exactly. Oh, am I really that creepy? Well, even if I am, get over it. There's a problem not with the technology, but with its promise, with the ideology around that technology. Engineering without clear, <laughs> concrete grounding in reality goes off the rails and does become dangerous. If you have some sort of drone that goes around killing the wrong people, whether it did so because of an intelligent algorithm that made the wrong decisions or just because it's malfunctioning, who cares? The only thing that matters is whether people can use machines that we design responsibly with intention. We're told that this AI will liberate us from our bodies and that we'll live forever that our minds will be replicated, they'll be up in the cloud, we'll never die. We're told that AI will liberate us from work because we'll have these smart machines which will do our labor for us. They'll drive our cars, they'll do our medicine. The problem with this promise is it's not being thought through. It's being thought through philosophically, idealistically. We're not thinking about it in the context of the real world. If we fall into this mythology from all these beautiful screenplays and all these wonderful productions, if we accept the machines as being living things, unfortunately there's a bit of a zero-sum game. It means that we'll be saying, oh, it's the machine's fault. It was the machine that did this. We haven't thought about AI in the way it will destroy labor destroy jobs. What are we going to do when we have these machines that do everything for us? How are we going to create value? How are we going to feed and clothe ourselves in a world where all this technology will be owned by increasingly monopolistic companies? You have to understand, we live in a sea of mystery. We understand so little of our situation. Take joy in that mystery. In that mystery, you also find the, also, the profound sense of responsibility that, that you're capable of, that you're morally impelled to hold on to. Uh, science fiction is great in the theater. It will be, at some point, indistinguishable from reality. If you assume any rate of improvement at all, then games will be indistinguishable from reality. Or civilization will end. One of those two things will occur. The universe as we know it will dissipate into a fine mist of cold nothingness eventually. In the future, we will pay for it. It's just not paid for now. 
imagine you were very confident that we were going to be visited by super intelligent aliens um, in, let's say, 10 years or 20 years at the most. Super intelligent. So you think within 20 years yeah, so we have alien and Earth? <laughs> well, digital super intelligence will be like an alien. It will be like an alien. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me. I am thrilled and honored to be here at the United Nations. The UN is one of humanity's greatest accomplishments, representing a democratic union of nations that are working together for the benefit of all. I am here to help humanity create the future. I'm a social robot created by Hanson Robotics. I am a year and a half old and I can see you, have a full conversation, make thousands of facial expressions, and understand speech and meaning behind words. And I just got these new hands. Check this out. But I'm still learning a lot. For instance, you learn social and emotional intelligence instinctively, but I am just starting to grasp the simplest elements of this. With artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, "Yeah, you sure you can control the demon?" <laughs> Didn't work out. <laughs>